The usual rule is that women like to collect more than men. And men frequently complain about their wives' acquisitory volume. When I meet somebody like that, I say, tell you what, come on by the house, bring your husband. And of course, after that, the husband never complains because, but for the grace of God, she could be as bad as Pete Cecere and have all this stuff there. My earliest memories are collecting. I walk around the house and it makes me say, God, that's neat. It's beautiful. You're beautiful. And I call these pieces my kids. The name of the game in my old age is to try and get a lot of the kids into museums where they will be appreciated. They're the memories and the stories. But after I die, there's no more stories because I'm dead the depth and the breadth of the things that he has collected is in fact reflected by the interest that major museums have had in acquiring his works. He was a terrific eye. An eye not only for, for what's beautiful and important, but an eye for the exotic. And when they kind of come together at the same time, you've got a great piece of art. It's not just about highbrow art collecting. I just love the fact that he's just as likely to buy a squeaking rubber chicken as a, an amazing carved art piece. The question about the collection is always, what, what's enough? And the answer is, there's never enough. If you're really a nut like I am about buying, if you see something you have the money for and it's available, you'll buy it. Wash away your sins, bubble bath. Baptism in a bottle. Bishop tested, cardinal approved. The sanctified soak removes stubborn guilt. Once you walk in here, you're bowled over and you're not going to be the same again. I decided that Mike Buzzards should be talked to in Spanish. And so in the morning, when I get up and I look up, and there they are circling around, and I'm still alive, I say, todavía no, not yet. And make a obscene gesture, and then get up and get, get dressed. There's no reason why you can't have a lot of laughs about the bathroom. There's paintings in here, art of people sitting on toilets. And I built a nose that lifts up and stores stuff, and a mustache, so an eyebrow, so it looks like a face. I always tell everybody, you know, if I had been assigned to the Foreign Service to the moon, I'd probably collect older rocks. I went to Bolivia, and in Bolivia, my whole life changed. Yeah, I liked art, so I started buying stuff. He would ship things to my mom and dad in Brooklyn. That started in Bolivia with the textiles. Montevideo, Uruguay. The headbands. Mexico City. The purses. The Quito, Ecuador. Things that turned into wall hangings and rugs. Barcelona. And uh, it, it was a huge amount of stuff every time. I'm still finding things that I haven't seen. I might turn around and go, oh, when did you get this? 1965, it's been on that wall. You buy because it tickles your fancy, essentially. I never buy for investment. If people could say, well, in 10 years, it's gonna be worth 50%, buy it anyway. The folk art phenomenon has grown enormously. So you have a huge audience for this stuff and a growing appreciation. I mean, who could say what's art or not? The criteria should not be the education of the artist or the sophistication of the work, but the, the spirit of the painting. Pete's collection is very important because it, it preserves the artistic perspectives of a particular time and place. People may have made these things because they needed the money or well, because they liked it. Who knows why they made them? They're still beautiful objects. The term folk art implies a tradition. Outsider art implies it has no relation with any tradition or anything. It's a complete off the wall thing that that person felt. There's so much stuff, so much color. It's what I used to call a holy shit house. I'm always conscious of the fact that I'm a custodian of beauty. It doesn't bother me in the least if you hate the house, but you have to see that it's a house put together with passion.
I like to be remembered as an eccentric person who was loyal to his friends and was a good cook. <laughs> Boom chicka boom catch him in a rat trap.